Has this ever happened to you? What you need is a drill. Nothing adds more negative mass to your builds than a hole. Just $99.99. Follow the link on your screen in the next 24 hours and you'll get a second drill absolutely free. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. In all seriousness though, the first thing we're actually going to need here is one of these which is a jeweler's scale. Now the reason I'm mentioning these is they are fairly cheap, you can find them online for about 10 bucks and they are a lot more precise and just a lot better at weighing things than a traditional kitchen scale. So sure a traditional kitchen scale can weigh an ant weight and tell you that the thing is overweight but if you start getting to the point of is this thing half a gram heavier than this thing, you really want a jeweler's scale. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to strip down Mini Mammoth here as much as we possibly can and we are going to weigh all of the individual pieces because what we need to do now is hunt for where the weight is. Sure we could go poking speed holes in absolutely every component of this thing that we possibly can but that may not help us too much and it also might weaken something that is already light enough that we don't actually need to take weight out of it. So a comprehensive overview of where all the weight sits inside Mini Mammoth is definitely our best first step. Okay, so I have all of our parts now set out and it is time to go hunting to see where all the weight is. Now, uh, the reason I've done this is so that I can kind of isolate as much as I possibly can. In a normal build, I would also like isolate out weapon motors and drive motors and stuff, but all of that is soldered in. So we've got a chassis and all the, the electronics bar the battery, which I can take out fairly easily. We have the weapon axle, we have the actual weapon lifting arm, we have the little spacer, we actually have two spacers uh, for the weapon, we have our little standoff that sits out the back, we have screws for the standoff, we have all of the screws for everything else, uh, then we've got the armor panels and we've also got the um, motor mounts. Now, like I said, the reason I've kind of done this is because we want to find our biggest weight draw, like these motor mounts that I have, I do have smaller versions of these, I have half sized versions of these, however if I throw these two on the scale right now, I'll find that together these two motor mounts are 6 grams, so if I halve the amount of motor mount that I have, which is all I can really do with these, I'll go down by 3 grams, which on its own is a decent amount, but it's not enough and also I would prefer to have the motors captured properly, uh, so that's going to be kind of more of a last resort. So let's take a look at all of these things in turn. First up is the chassis and the, the electronics, and as expected that is a hundred and one grams. So that's probably going to be our, well that is our heaviest component here. Out of 154 grams we've got 101 here. The battery is next up, it is 12.4 grams and I do have lighter batteries, I have my handmade 2S 80 milliamp hour battery which I can get in half a second and test the weight on it. Next is the thing that I think I'm probably going to have a large saving on, this is the aluminium tube that I run the weapon on, it is quite long. Oh! But it is only 6 grams. Now this is the thing, this is why uh, I am advocating for finding where your weight is because I assumed that this one piece was going to be the thing that was tipping me over the edge. I thought this was going to be probably in the order of like 15 or so grams and by swapping it out or shortening it and adding like plastic extensions I would maybe be able to make up all the weight that I wanted to in this one piece. But that's why we uh, test all of the different bits and pieces and see how much weight there is in there. So like I said, this is 6 grams and I'm looking to save 4. 
There is no way I'm gonna be able to save four grams out of this one piece of six gram aluminium. Uh, and replacing it with other things isn't going to save me four grams because I don't think there's anything that I can put into this chassis that is this exact size that is going to be just two grams and is also gonna be able to hold up in a competition. Uh, next is the full weapon assembly, uh, which I'm gonna leave the bolts and everything in as well. Okay, that's 15 grams on its own. So the next thing to do with that would be to break it down further and to test it and see if uh, we can get that down a little bit because it's 15 grams altogether, but that if I can like thin out the arms a little bit or thin out the body, we might be able to save four or five grams out of the 15 gram hole here. Let's take a look at our uh, spaces. Now spaces are two grams between the two of them. I don't think we need to really worry about changing those up. Anything we do is probably actually just gonna add more mass. Uh, our little standoff, <laughs> less than a gram, that's point eight, nine grams. So that again, something that we shouldn't really be touching on. The motor mounts we've looked at before at six grams, we can change these over if we want to. Uh, all of the screws, because there's actually a lot of little plastic screws that go into this design, but all of them together are 1.3 grams. So that is not going to help us in terms of getting rid of stuff out of them is not really gonna help us. And then next, finally, we have our uh, armor panels up the front, which I've cut and shaped quite nicely. Those are seven grams. Okay, so we could actually cut a little bit off of those and maybe drop a couple of grams there. Now, as mentioned, we're only really looking for four grams at the moment, but we also do need a lid for the top plate. So I would be happy to get kind of six to eight grams out of this entire setup. So before we start drilling into the chassis, because that is of course uh, the obvious answer to this would be to drill out some of the, uh, the back of um, uprights here, get rid of a bit of weight out of those, maybe get rid of a bit of weight out of the 3D prints up the front here. That's kind of where I'd want to go or where a lot of people would want to go immediately. But I think with just some substitution and maybe a reprint of the weapon system, we can get this down without having to take a drill to the chassis. Okay, so first on the list, we're gonna look at the battery because I think a substitution here could save us a decent chunk of weight. As mentioned, it's about 12 grams, 12.4 grams. And I do have this 80 milliamp hour battery, which I've proven before, can run an ant weight and it is sitting at 8.6 grams. So we make almost four grams saving by doing this one change, which is what I need to get the whole robot running at the moment without top armor. So we still need to do something else to get rid of enough weight to make the top armor work, but that's a good start on our part. I do just need to fix this battery up. It does have a uh, busted connection, but I can fix that up very, very soon and we can put this into the robot. The next one I wanted to look at was the motor mounting. So my motor mounts are little square U-shape pieces, which they do work quite well. And obviously because of the chassis, the chassis has uh, printed notches in it for these exact motor mounts. But I do have versions of them that are half clip versions that we can potentially run in here instead, which will actually save us probably about another three grams. Then between these two things, we have seven grams of weight saving, which is actually pretty decent already. Shorter versions are uh, 1.1 gram a piece. So actually we're making more of a saving than I thought we were at the disadvantage of these being a lot thinner, which means that there is less for the motor to be clamped in with uh, on these new motor mounts. But we're saving a decent chunk of weight, so I think this is worthwhile. I think also as a fail safe measure, I am going to cut some extra out of the armor panels that I have here, just because uh, we're gonna be fairly close on weight anyway, so we might as well get as much out of this as we possibly can, which means I'm gonna cut probably just the tip off here and re-angle the angle that I have set up just so that it gives us just that little bit more. I'll probably save another two grams.
Would you look at that? We are overachievers. That is 145 grams. So we've dropped 10 grams essentially out of this, uh, this mini mammoth here, which is impressive. That's more than I thought we were gonna drop with a few very simple changes that we just made. But does it still work? So there we go, that is Mini Mammoth done and dusted now. We have a fully functional robot that is now underweight and underweight by about five grams, which means I can put that weight back wherever I would like. I think I need to adjust uh, this standoff post because at the moment the robot leans really far back and it should actually be leaning on these front forks. So I've got a bit of an error in my uh, design here that I need to fix up. But I'll probably do that off camera between now and the next event, which hopefully is happening sometime soon. Uh, so there we go. That is going to be it for this video. I hope you have all enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.